I hope everybody's doing well today. We're going to start with a breathing exercise. So if you're comfortable sitting upright, if you feel like your shoulders are relaxed and your knees are kind of sloping away from you and you don't kind of feel like this, then you can stay seated. But because this is going to be sort of a challenging breathing exercise, I invite you to also lie down on your back. I'm not going to do that just so you can hear me better, but lying down on your back might feel really wonderful for this particular exercise. So if you want to make your way down, feel free. And just let the breath flow, start to settle in and tune into your body. Noticing how you feel today. And we'll hang out here for another minute or so before we get going. Hmm. Invite movements into the body, getting out wiggles, itches, that kind of thing. Maybe blowing your nose might be a good idea if you're feeling a little congested. But entering your practice today with some ease and grace, no pressure, welcoming yourself. And you can sort of dive in as you close your eyes, as you get more situated. We can dive into a meditation as we do our best to clear our mind of distractions. Sometimes this means running through that laundry list of things to do, things to remember. Run through that list one time, maybe two, and then let it go. You don't need it for the next hour. <sighs> Simply watch and witness the breath flowing in and out. Find a comfortable place for your hands and arms and legs. Finding what feels most useful and helpful in your body this evening. And today we're going to practice focusing on our exhales. I myself have often focused a little bit too much on the inhale in my life when I'm catching my breath, thinking about this deep and powerful inhale. And while that's really important, the exhale is just as important, if not more. And I forget that sometimes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to count to five on the inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna to count to five and then we're gonna whisper. So you can count silently in your head for five and then we'll whisper six, seven, eight. And that's going to help us kind of press out whatever little bit of air is left in our system and we're going to inhale again for five counts. So it's an inhale five count, exhale eight count, and see if you can whisper out those last 
few numbers. And I'll count to help us keep rhythm. Take a big cleansing breath in and out. Okay, inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Whisper, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Whisper, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Whisper, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four. Five. Whisper seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Whisper seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Whisper seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Whisper seven, eight. Keep it up. Do this a few more times on your own. If you're feeling like this is really hard, that's okay, that's normal. If you feel you need to stop early, of course, be my guest. But if this feels like it's doable, I encourage you to keep up the really good work. And press out every last drop of breath before you take that big inhale once again. Let's do this three more times. Okay, breathe normally. Awesome job. Notice how you're feeling. Let that practice absorb. Notice if you feel a little bit calmer, a little bit more relaxed. Notice the relief of being able to breathe naturally, however the breath wants to flow. Get some support from the floor. And if you would like to bring your hands to your heart in prayer or dedication, we can set an intention for class. If there's any healing you're working on or anybody you know that needs some healing, we can send our thoughts there. If there's any goals you're working towards, or maybe you just want to dedicate your practice to a loved one, an animal, a place that 
brings you peace and comfort. We'll try and create this space of tranquility and peace. And this is our home base. So whenever you're feeling less than optimal throughout class or throughout your day, try to come back here. And I'm going to seal our meditation in with an ohm. You can join me or just listen. I'll try and do it so it doesn't blow our audio out, keeping it nice and quiet. But ohm is actually a o um, so it's an aum. And at the end of our um, mm, you can press the tongue to the roof of your mouth and kind of lengthen and wiggle that spine and let that vibration take place in the back of the throat. This is super awesome for healing, cleansing ourselves of sickness. It's vibrating our lymph nodes. So it's actually scientifically doing something, which is pretty cool. All right, if you're joining me, big breath in. Um... child's pose time crawl into your comfiest version of child's pose blankets are welcome suggested recommended And I like to use my arms for a little support under my head. But whatever feels good. And just enjoy the support here for a few breaths, settling in through the hips and the head, letting the spine lengthen. We'll take a few more breaths here. Breathing through the nose. Okay, and then we'll come to tabletop. When you're ready, opening the fingers really wide and pulling the hips up over the knees. We can kind of wiggle those hips from side to side. Get the shins so that they're parallel with each other. And root down through all the corners of the hand, the heel of the hand, the um, places where the fingers connect into the hand, the balls of each finger joint, just root down. And lift the belly button up just a little bit. 
If you're like me, you might tend to kind of let the belly fall, <laughs> see if we can keep it slightly engaged. And we're gonna extend the left foot back and just hover it off the floor for a moment. And then inhale your knee to your nose. We're gonna do that just three times and see if you could pull that knee so far forward. We might even be able to kiss it. I can't. <laughs> inhale, extend the leg back. Exhale, press that knee up. Exhale, back, last one. Inhale, pull it up and in. Maybe we can kiss it, maybe one day. <laughs> Exhale, send it back and then take it down. Awesome. So obviously a core workout here. It's going to help us pull our foot forward eventually for some low lunging today. All right, we're going to extend the right leg back now. Inhale. Exhale, pull it up and in. Try and kiss it. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale, last one. Inhale. Exhale. And come back to table. Come down onto the elbows now. And see if you can get your forearms and hands so that they're parallel like two railroad tracks. Elbows under the shoulders. And then just rock forward and back a few times. So we're waking up this shoulder joint, trying our best to open it up. And then on the next exhale, just settle back into a child's pose. Let the arms extend, drop the head. Maybe we keep the elbows lifted off the floor. We'll hold for three more breaths. Big inhale, big exhale. And we'll come back to our elbows, coming back onto the elbows. See if you can keep those hands wide. If you have a block, it might be helpful to place that block in between either hand, and it kind of helps us with a little bit of resistance there, and a wall to push off of. And we'll experiment curling the toes under and lifting our hips up as we straighten the legs for dolphin pose. So just practice that once or twice, see if we can press the shoulders towards the feet. Coming down after a breath. And then maybe trying it one more time. Really big shoulder opener. Keep lifting your belly button towards the spine. Okay, and we'll take a break in your comfy child's pose. Let's take our hands towards the feet to give our shoulders a much deserved break. Notice the pressure and resistance of the legs against the body, the breath, the belly. And see if you can expand anyway. Maybe open and close the fingers a few times. Mm. 
and we'll roll to sit back on the heels for hero's pose, finding a nice and tall spine. Let your arms hang out in your lap, relax the shoulders down the back. In fact, let's actually shrug the shoulders up and then back a few times. Shrug them up and then take them down and back one more time, up, down and back, and then stay here with a nice relaxed shoulders down the back. Pull that belly button towards the back body. And we'll take a few head rotations, drawing big circles with our head. One way, once, twice, three times maybe. And then changing directions. Same amount of times through each side, maybe. And then finding a nice neutral chin somewhere in the middle there. Okay, we're going to come back to dolphin pose. And it may feel nice to kind of have skin on sticky mat. We'll come back to our dolphin pose on our forearms. When you're ready, curling the toes under and lifting the hips up and back. And see if we can lift one leg off the ground at a time. So just practice lifting one leg up, holding for a breath, extending that heel away from you and then taking it down and taking up the other foot. So you can flex the foot and kind of make sure our hips are square and we're not opening up the hip at all. Holding and then taking it down. And if you're up for it, maybe trying it one more time on each leg and maybe resting in child's pose if you've had your fill. Awesome job, friends. Big breath in and out. And if you're not in child's pose already, we'll take a comfortable child's pose, your favorite version. It might feel nice to have the hands towards the feet once again. <sighs> and catch up with your breath. Notice if you can feel or even hear your heart beating. And just a few more breaths here. When you're ready, we'll come to our first downward facing dog. Taking your time to get there. Walking it out a little bit, lifting the belly button and pressing the shoulders towards the feet. And here's where our hard work from earlier is going to come in handy using our core muscles. Step the left foot forward. See if you can tuck the knee up and in and then place that foot as far forward as you can. Sometimes we can use our momentum to kind of thrust it up there <laughs> and try and get that foot under your face and then take your left foot to the left, your right foot to the right. So we're nice and sturdy. And we can drop that right knee now, settle the right knee down, sink into the hips. And we'll slowly lift our hands up to that front knee. Or low lunge. And then we can interlace our fingers and point our pointer fingers up, reach the arms up, look up and back for a back bend. This is optional, of course. 
Awesome, and then we'll exhale our hands back down. Great job, beautiful. Curl the back toes under and lift the right knee up. Nice and high. And we're gonna propel off our back leg to balance on our left leg. See if you can throw yourself forward, be careful. And if you have anything in front of you, that's a great idea. I've got this little stool that is perfect. And we'll balance, trying our best to make a T-shape, warrior three. And we'll hold for three, two. Lift the chin, lift the heart. Big inhale. Exhale, awesome, drop that right foot down to the floor. Take your time, just let it land wherever it wants to go. So if you have support, I do recommend having that in front of you. We can keep our hands on it. And we're gonna step our right foot back into warrior one. So I'm gonna move my blanket. So the right foot's gonna go pretty far back, about depending on your height, you know, three, four feet, maybe even wider. And our right toes are at three o'clock on a clock. And our, the whole surface area of both feet are completely down. Great. And we've got our hands in front of us, supporting us. If you don't have anything, you can take your hands to the thigh. And then we're gonna try our best to broaden our heart space. Pull your shoulders back together. Lift the heart, lift the belly and square those hips off. So pull your left hip back and the right hip forward and then take a fold, bringing our hands back to our support and lead with your heart as you hinge over the left leg for Parvo Tanasana. And this is where our support comes in handy. If you have even a chair, a folding chair would be so good, but anything works. Drive down through both feet. Okay, inhale, halfway lift. So lift your heart up, lift the chin up, maybe pull your hands up away from your support, halfway lift. And then exhale, fold forward one more time. So we are really working out that left glute, the left hip. Awesome job. We've got a great transition here next. We'll bend that left knee and then take the right foot and tuck it behind the left leg. Bend the right knee behind the left knee and we're gonna sit on down for seated spinal twist. Awesome. If you wanna sit on your blankets here, that's also an option. If you wanna take the time to do that, and we'll twist towards the left, so towards your lifted knee. Big twist, not too big. Don't try and press yourself too far into this. Let your gaze take you there. Gently looking over the shoulder. And we'll hold for three more breaths. Three, two, one. Inhale to center. Inhale back onto center. You can gently twist the other way, very gently twisting the other way. And then we'll come back to center, take our hands behind us and extend our legs out in front. Just give them a little shake, bending the knees, and then come down onto your elbows. 
arms just for a few breaths coming down to the elbows getting some support from the floor maybe rocking a little bit from side to side all right and then we're going to come back to our downward facing dog we can cross the ankles sit over the feet the legs maybe pass through tabletop maybe pass through a child's pose and we'll lift ourselves back up to downward facing dog you may want your blanket there for your right knee for low lunging on our right knee Lifting those hips up and back. Taking a few cleansing breaths here. Maybe rising up and down on your tippy toes. I don't know if you guys heard that, but I, my toes cracked pretty loudly over here. <laughs> and then using our nice, strong core muscles to hug our knee in, we'll do our best to Propel our right foot forward. See if you can get it underneath your face, as far forward as you can. And then inch your right foot to the right and your left foot to the left. So we're a little bit sturdier. Awesome, and then drop your left knee down. And we can sink the hips forward for our low lunge. Maybe taking our hands up to the front knee. Big breath in and out. And then we can make, I don't want to call it a gun, but <laughs> point your fingers up. And then we'll lean back, look up if you're opting for this back bend. And then exhale your hands forward. Curl the back toes under, lift the back knee up. And then we'll use our back knee to propel ourselves forward, finding ourselves in that T-shape for a warrior three. And I have my support in front of me. And we'll try and just balance here for a few breaths. Keep lifting the belly up. <sighs> Big breath in and out. Great, exhale your left foot to the floor to just give yourself a break and we'll set up for warrior one. So maybe moving, let me get out of the way. The left foot goes towards the left edge of your mat and the left toes are at 10 o'clock. All surface areas of both feet are rooted getting your comfort comfort your comfy situation and then we'll pull our hands up and away to straighten through that right leg lift your heart big inhale broaden the chest pull the shoulders back and then exhale fold over your right leg find your support if you have it for parvo tanasana on the right leg <sighs> taking some cleansing breaths we'll take a couple more breaths before we halfway lift again let your heart lead yourself down further Okay, inhale, halfway lift again, just so we get that experience of broadening through the heart space. The shoulders pull back, the belly lifts up at the same time. That right leg is nice and straight. And then exhale, fold one more time. So that inhale, exhale really activates our right hip right here. See if we can sink a little bit more. Good. 
Okay, now time for the fun transition to seated spinal. So we can bend that front knee and then just step that left knee behind the right knee, just a big cross. And then we settle our hips to land on the inside of that left foot. Finding both hips rooted into the floor. Nice toss spine. Take your time to sit on blankets if that is helpful for you. And we'll twist towards the right hip, towards that lifted right knee. Gently gaze over the right shoulder. <sighs> Taking several cleansing, relaxing breaths. Okay, inhale to center. Take a little twist the other way. And then we'll take our hands behind us, extend the legs out in front of you and just give them a little shake. Okay, we're gonna slow down. We're moving to the floor. That The hard part's over. We can move our support out of the way. We've got it. And we're going to do a bound angle pose. So blankets are awesome to slide under the hips if you want, or under that pinky edge of the feet if your joints are sensitive, if your bones are sensitive. And we're just bringing soles of the feet together, knees open for butterfly pose. We can bounce the knees a few times if you want. And whenever you're ready, just lead with the heart and take a fold forward. <sighs> Keep leading with your heart until you feel you've reached your limit. When you've reached your length, your stretching capacity. And then we can let the head kind of melt and get heavier and heavier and heavier. Let the breath flow. deeply. See if you can surrender yourself to this posture. Things are definitely slowing down so we can let go of too much effort here of trying hard, slipping into ease, ease and grace. We'll take five more breaths here. Awesome job. And we'll slowly roll on up nice and slow. Headless last. And we might want to grab onto the shins and kind of lean back, look up, drop the ear from shoulder to shoulder. Awesome. 
The next pose we're going to do is going to be shoelace pose or eagle. And we can do it seated or there's a variation on your back. So if you want to opt in to the one on your back, I'll show you what that is first. And then if you want to do it seated, bear with me. So we're just taking an ankle on top of the thigh, interlacing the fingers behind the leg and hugging your legs in. It's kind of like a figure four. We'll do that on both sides. And if you want the other way, it's a little bit more intense. We can set up with our blankets. We'll have one blanket for our ankles and one blanket for our seat. And I like to make mine a nice big thick fold and I have the rounded sort of triangle bit, sort of this pyramid of support. And I point that towards the front edge of my mat. So it's at an angle. And then we'll take, we'll come to tabletop. Well, here, let's do this. You're just going to cross your knees like so and take your feet to opposite sides of your setup and then settle down. So we're basically bending like a pretzel. It's a pretty intense stretch through your outer hip right here, but you do want both your hips rooted. The soles of our feet are facing upwards. Let me adjust my camera so you can see me better. So we can get into it from the knees and then you kind of wiggle the knees so that they're sandwiched on top of one another. And then we sit down, soles of the feet upward. This is really hard for a lot of people to do. So if it's super uncomfortable, that's totally normal. We can try the lying down version. Men especially struggle with this one. Their hips aren't as flexible as ours. but it's an internal rotation of those hips. So the hips are actually coming into the body as the knees roll out. <sighs> Try and settle in and find the tall spine. taking some cleansing breaths. Now, if you would like, you can introduce an arm posture. Whatever leg is on top, you can take that arm on top of your other arm and cross elbows. Once again, like a pretzel, the ultimate pretzel pose. Besides eagle, this is cow face or shoelace. Ardasana. Pull that belly button back towards the spine. And if you're feeling extra limber and adventurous today, maybe you keep your arms, your elbows crossed, but open up the fingers and Fold forward and try and reach for opposite feet. That's super stretchy bendy. I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you wanna try it, have fun, be careful. <laughs> Maybe not tonight. <laughs> Maybe we'll just sit on the hips and chill out for a few more breaths. <sighs> Sometimes it's fun just to try it. And then our body ends up telling us, hey, try that again. And we can hold it a little bit longer. And then it tells us, try it again. And it actually feels good.
Okay, we'll take our hands behind our back, extend the legs out and give them a really good gentle shake. So really shaking it out. Pull the knees up and just kind of working those hips open. Let's drop our knees from left to right, doing a windshield wiper. And we'll try that cross the other way. So maybe you're reclining and doing a figure four with your legs, or you're crossing your knees, getting them as sandwiched as you can. Remember how I have my setup. I find it helpful for me when it comes to yoga and props. It's definitely a princess and the pea situation. If it's not just right, the whole thing's thrown off. So take your time to get there. Soles of the feet are upwards, legs super crossed, pretzel style, and settle in through both hips. We want to feel both seat bones, both hips on the floor, on your blankets, supported. Pull the belly button back, relax the shoulders. You want to introduce arms we can cross our arms like a pretzel whatever leg is on top have that arm on top and we just kind of force those elbows and see if we can latch hands as well And if you're feeling extra limber, extra adventurous, we can release our hands, keep the elbows crossed, and then reach for opposite feet as you fold forward. And maybe not. Maybe we just come out and relax into those hips. Let the breath flow. Take three more breaths. And we'll take our hands behind us, extend the legs out, uncrossing them, and kind of drop the shins from left to right. Maybe give the knees a gentle padding. Finding what feels good. All right, we'll make our way onto our back finally. Awesome job today. Set up for comfort. We'll do happy baby and then we'll take Shavasana. So pillows under the head might be nice. Pillows under the low back. And just take happy baby in your own time, enjoying it, rocking and rolling. If there's any 
last minute postures you want to take, if there's anything that your body is telling you it wants to do, now is a great time to do that. We actually have plenty of time here to take another pose. And then whenever you're ready, we'll enter Shavasana, corpse pose. <sighs> I'll definitely give us some time here to get situated. Wrapping yourself up in blankets, finding your sweaters, your socks. It's always a really nice way to close class. Let's take a big sigh of relief. <sighs> Class is over. The day is nearing its end. We just spent an hour focusing on our breath and our body, which is just so good for us. So we can kind of pat ourselves on the back. Awesome job. Let the skin of your face get nice and soft. Relax the jaw. Relax your tongue. And if you want, I'll walk us through our breath exercise from the beginning of class one more time. Of course, it's optional. But if you want to do it, we can do that again. And we're holding it. We're using five counts. So five inhale, five exhale, six, seven, eight. And as we get better at it, we can actually inhale for 10 seconds, exhale for 10, and count out all the breath. But we have, definitely have to be careful with our breath exercises. We want to make sure we feel safe. We don't want to get dizzy at all. So just listening to yourself. But I'll walk us through a few rotations. Keep it easy. Keep it soft. If you don't want to do it, by all means. But we'll inhale. Two, three, four, five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, whisper, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, whisper, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, whisper, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, whisper, seven, eight, last one, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, whisper, seven, eight. Awesome job. And let the breath flow. Dive into this meditation. Let the body float as the floor supports you entirely and completely. 
Let your head be heavy. Fingers and toes relaxed. And let the energy and vitality of your core radiate outwards through the whole body. Deposit negative energy out the base of the spine into the floor. And absorb optimism, peace, love, forgiveness, all the good stuff through the crown of the head. Let go and let it flow. And we'll come to the sleeping position when you're ready. Take your time. Definitely take your time getting there. Feeling the weight and warmth of your body. And we'll come to a seated posture when you're ready. If you want to take the time to slide blankets under your seat bones, under your hips, that's always a great idea so that we close class in optimal positioning. And just observe and notice how you feel after practicing. Take a moment to acknowledge the present, uniting body, mind, and soul in the here and now, the gift that is the present. Honoring this really subtle practice, the simplicity of it. I'm going to own again today. Feel free to join me. Big breath in. 
Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, a wonderful week. See you next week. <laughs>